Hey guys, man, I've got so many questions to ask my guest today and uh, it's pretty rare to have a guest on Into the Lair. So you know this is gonna be a special one with my friend, my Or Applebaum. I just practiced it for about 10 minutes and said it wrong. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. You're, my Or, if you're not familiar with him, is a, a world-class top flight uh, mastering engineer, done a lot of great projects. You've, you've seen him on our show before. And if you get a moment, uh, run, look him up, and uh, on Google. Not now. Ma Maura, what have you been working on? Is there something that uh, that we need to listen to and go check out? I did the latest Faith No More Ooh. album, Soul Invictus, which I'm really happy with. Yeah. Um, you know, working with a, ba a band yeah. that is a legacy band. Is, yeah, it's fun. And I did a, a new Meatloaf album, Braver oh, Than cool. We Are, which cool. actually charted number four on the British album charts. Okay. Oh, um, did some Yes, oh, cool. you know, the band Yes, and uh, I did a single for Lupe Fiasco. Oh, we which, love Lupe, yeah. Which Bob Horn mixed. It oh, was, our buddy Bob. Yep, uh, it's Pick Up the Phone. And that was Pick cool. Up the Phone? I'll yeah, check it out, the one. I'll check it out. And uh, a new Era Gales album, which oh, okay. uh, charted number one on the iTunes Blues charts. Okay. So, and What's Common the, Kings, which Oh, I love, I love those guys. Yeah. They're amazing. Sounds like you've been busy. All good yeah. stuff. Wide variety, you can do anything, right? I love all types of music, so yeah. I just like doing it all and okay. enjoying the process. Cool. We live in a time where we need to know and understand how, how streaming actually works. Uh, streaming is now, more, Spotify is now surpassing YouTube in terms of where people listen to music. So what what is the mechanism by which we need to understand how loud to make our mixes. Is it is it RMS still? Is it is it, what is it? Well, we can still use RMS for our usage because we know the RMS range. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're I familiar would, with it. We're familiar, and I wouldn't say ditch it. Still uh, okay. use it because that's what you're familiar with, okay. and also the peak is inform. You know, that's the information we're always using. Okay. Okay. Um, in terms of LUFS, which is the loudness units in relative to full scale. That's where a lot of the streaming services are heading into. Mm -hmm. And the idea is basically they have a huge catalog. They want everything to sound the same. So they'll take something. The same level. Kind of, yeah. Well, we call it perceived loudness. Mm -hmm. So they'll take something from 20, 30, 40 years ago and try to match it to something current, which okay. is a big job to do. Okay. So um, we just got to know how to monitor that. Okay. So let's say I'm doing a mix. Um, I've recently been using some plugins that give me. Uh, an instant readout of LUFS. Uh, I've been trying to trying to aim for like anywhere from 9, 10, 11, 12 because I heard that Spotify looks for 12 and iTunes looks for 14. Is that accurate or is it changing every day? It's changing. Oh you'll, have, you'll have more things to chase <laughs> as time goes by. Minus 14 is probably a good range to be at okay. if you want to keep dynamics and uh -huh. still to fit with everything else. Uh -huh. um, certain things can be like minus 13 if you want to push more. Okay. I've seen stuff that is minus 12 and it, it went fine. Now if I, if I'm, let's say I, let's say I put in, I send them something that's minus eight, what happens? Well, basically once they'll read it in comparison to something else, they'll just lower it. They'll lower the overall volume. The overal volume, not limiting, Okay. But they'll just, just bring gain it down. It down. Yeah. So that it, uh, so that so 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 trying to get a parent volume um, doesn't work it, the, because they'll they'll use a they'll use a parent volume as the judge for how so so technically um, a song by 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 some kind of candy ass artist that's not very loud but has a, a, a low luffs, I, I could be softer than them. It's possible, huh? Well, you'll probably not be softer in terms of how the compression is, but you'll probably be at the same volume, uh -huh. if not even lower, because his might have a bit more range. When, when, you're, when you're mastering, do you, you pay attention to those numbers, right? Well, it's one of those, par uh, you know, numbers that I look at, mm -hmm. but we also have to take into consideration what the client wants, the label, mm -hmm. And all these. Do you ever do a separate mastering for, uh, say, uh, Spotify and iTunes and, and SoundCloud, and a, and a separate one for uh, the client's own personal needs? You, you... 
if it's a requested, uh, okay. you know, because then a lot of times they want to take what is there and they have their ways of distributing it. Mm -hmm. They don't want uh, something else. Mm -hmm. in and, but there are cases where I've been requested to deliver something else for mm -hmm. iTunes. Or, so, so your recommendation as a professional, would it be to, to, to have a number that you, that you very seldom go above? I mean, if I, if I send a 10 LUFS, uh, there's a chance I could squeak that by without them pulling it down? We're probably going to peak that, you know, they're probably going to pull that down a bit. Okay. But if the mix is very balanced. What does that mean? Balanced, you mean that we don't have too much excessive frequencies, you know, too much okay. low end. That's, okay. that's so eating. So the, the low end is something to really pay attention to because that could move the meter. Yeah, same with RMS. Uh, okay. You know, we can have a, a mix that has a huge RMS, but it doesn't sound, you know, apparently loud as something with less oh, okay. RMS and more mid range and highs. Okay. So there is still a perceived volume factor. Okay. Um, if your mix is balanced, then it will translate more close to what an RMS figure would be. Is I notice that that a lot of times when I'm trying to get a, a LUFS, uh, LUFS reading, um, I, I've been using a Limitless Limiter and it's got it built into the plugin, but I notice it doesn't give me a number right away. Is it an average over time or? Oh, it yeah. is. LUFS so, re requires you to actually look at the song from a certain point to another you know, point. Okay. So, so if I've got a quiet eight bar intro, a quiet eight bar bridge, I can sneak a little more by it, huh? You probably can play around with certain areas. Okay. That's why you know, the, the idea is to get the balanced mix and probably emphasize areas where they can be more okay. active, you know, like higher frequencies, uh -huh. not harsh, but yeah. open up the high end or mid range. Gotcha. You'll probably get more perceived level also on smaller systems. If, if I if I if I tried to do it myself, me de pensado, and and put mine directly on sound on SoundCloud or say Spotify, uh, and or I, I I gave you the opportunity to master it. You'd do this for a living. You'd probably do it better, right? In other words, you would you would be able to get me a little more volume than I could get because you know how to do it better than I do. I'll probably be able to to you know, adjust a few things just okay. because I'm doing this on a For daily a living, basis. Yeah, no, that's, that's I might know how to listen. sneak in, okay. you know, maybe get a higher volume, but okay. still make it translate okay. nice. Okay. So that's possible. Yeah. I'm going to go to a little different subject for a second. Um, there was a time when a mastering engineer was needed to convert um, a piece of tape and get it on a piece of vinyl. Then, there, then when we went to CDs, there was a little less for a mastering engineer to do. I always like mastering engineers as a safety net. So I, I would use them if there was nothing for them to do just because I think they, uh, engineers like yourself, can actually add something to it that's intangible, a creative thing or something like that. Um, but it seems like now we need you more than ever because these streaming services all have different requirements, they all have different needs. Uh, if you guys out there aren't familiar with MFITs, uh, Apple, as you know, has a lot of requirements that, that uh, you have to be certified on, you have to take courses, and they, they make sure that, that you, Mayor, know how to, 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 to master for iTunes, MFITs. Um, is that different, when you do that, is that different than, than Spotify? So do you have to do a separate mastering for Spotify and for MFITs to take the best advantage of both platforms? Yeah, well, because you, we are using a different codec. Okay. And you know every codec has its own uh -huh. artifacts and, uh -huh. and how to push through it. Right. Explain so, to them what a codec is. A uh, codec would be a, a piece of uh, uh, software or application that converts uh -huh. one format to the other. And in this uh -huh. case, we're looking at WAV files that have a big size, and we're converting them to uh -huh. smaller files, uh -huh. so like MP3s. That's a far no for codec, mm -hmm. and we have uh, M4As, which is the AAC, which is the mm -hmm. Apple format gotcha. that is used in, in mm -hmm. iTunes. Let me ask you a silly question. Is there any advantage to giving you an MP3 to send to, to, to Spotify over, over a wave? You mean to give me as a mastering engineer yeah. or me as a mastering engineer giving someone else? No, for me, giving you a mastering engineer and telling you, uh, would you rather have and I say, hey, make this sound good on Spotify. Is it better to start from a wave or an MP3? To give me a mix 
to master, give me a WAV file. Okay, good. The better resolution, okay. the better I can work with it. Okay. But some platforms, as to, to deliver to them, sometimes it's better to give them exactly what you want them to, to send out. Don't give them the chance to convert it, in other words. Right, because sometimes their conversion uh -huh. is not it's, as controlled okay. is, as is your SoundCloud conversion. Is SoundCloud one of those? Or? I think most of the platforms, it's better to give them what they're going to put out okay. instead of just letting them make the conversion. Okay. You know, uh, some, of the, some of the platforms I notice mm -hmm. that if I want them to play MP3s, uh -huh. I won't give them WAV files. I'll just give them the okay. best MP3s I can make. So what happens... What happens if if I give, um, well, let's, let me rephrase it this way. I have material on Spotify that, 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 that was put up there before they were so concerned. They were, their, their LUFS was probably not even looked at. It was, it, it was probably, if I look at it now, it's probably nine, eight. Now, when they, when they go from, from, four, from 12 to 14, do they reconvert everything or only the new material that's coming in? They have the original material. Conversion is probably later on. Okay. Unless, you know, they have a different way of packing things. Okay. But uh, even when you watch YouTube and you change the bandwidth, uh -huh. they have a certain original which they make copies of. Oh, okay. And, and, and so they it. would go back and, and, and screw up it. Screw it, screw it up, no matter what I do. I was hoping that some of the old stuff would stay really loud, but that'll never happen, right? Because they're, they're always dealing with the original. Well, they are, yeah. And also, plus, if they're going down all the time, mm -hmm. they want to adjust it. So they'll probably okay. just adjust it. If it was then yeah. a different range than now, then just they, they'll go down. F from a professional standpoint, and, and I've always felt like mastering engineers had... had um, more accurate hearing than, than, than mix engineers because you guys work differently than we do, you know? Uh, when, when they take something and convert it down, what do you notice changes from a mastering standpoint? Is it some is it low end changes or is there a distortion element that gets added or? I, I do notice differences. Uh, if it was recorded on a high sample rate, a lot of times I know the symbols change. They, if it, on the high range, it was a bit smoother. Then when you go down, it becomes a bit harder. Oh, okay. uh, snare hits okay. sometimes change. Uh, that's why sometimes it's better to just keep the same sample rate yeah. and less conversion is better. But I do notice differences and yeah. even sometimes there's distortions that appear. Okay, yeah. so, so it's really something that, that a person uh, that's posting on Spotify should or, or iTunes or SoundCloud should really pay attention to. It's, it's a real thing now. It's not something like it was in the wild west of the five years ago where we, we just made everything as loud as we could and put it up there. By the way, guys, I love loud. I love loud. Loud is always better. Always has been, always will be. Uh, so my friend, I appreciate it. I learned a lot today. I hope you guys did too. If you need a mastering engineer, this is your guy. Check him out. Mayor. Good stuff, my friend. Thank you very much. Um, wow, I'm I'm kind of sad. I, I I I like I don't like limitations, and this is an artificial limitation that uh, I'm not happy about. But we got to do it, right? And it, it's an opportunity to think of other things to improve. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> Hope you guys got this. It's very important. We'll see you.